you. Sir, upon hearing the address of President of India, the immediate reaction that kept in my mind was that it was a conceited, self-promoting Sarlatan. It was reminded me of old Ghazal of Sahil Udhyanvi. Uh, the, the Ghazal was composed by Rabi. Aur ye gaya tha Mahendra Kapoor ji ne. 1973 film. Aur film ka naam tha Dhund. Is film mein jo gana compose kiya tha Rabi ji ne aur Sahil Udhyanvi ji ne likha tha. Main char line padhna chahta hu. ये राह कहां से है ये राह कहां तक है ये राज कोई राही समझा है ना जाना है एक धूंध से आना है एक धूंध में जाना है इतना ही फसाना है सर टू मी द एंटायर स्पीच ऑफ द ऑनरेबल प्रेसिडेंट इज कवर्ड विथ धूंध और मिस्ट नाउ लेट मी अनफोल्ड द मिस्टी सिनेरियो प्रोजेक्टेड इन द प्रेसिडेंट्स एड्रेस Firstly, in paragraph 14, the Honorable President has quoted from Dr. Baba Saheb Bhimrao Ambedkar, which said, and I quote, my deal would be a society based on liberty, equality, and fraternity, unquote. What is the performance of this government in so far as the equality is concerned? I am putting this question to me, sir, and Pat comes the reply that one should go through Oxfam report published in January this year, which internally says that the income of 84% of households in the country declined in 2021, but at the same time, the number of Indian billionaires grew from 102 to 142. The Oxfam report, released ahead of the World Economic Forum's Davos agenda, also found that the country's health care budget saw a 10% decline from revised estimates of 2021. There was a 6% cut in allocation for education, the Oxfam report says, while the budgetary allocation for social security schemes declined from 1.5% of the total union budget to 0.6%. The India supplement of the global report also says that in 2021, the collective wealth of India's 100 richest people hit a record high of rupees 57.3 lakh crore or 775 billion US dollar. In the same year, the share of bottom 50% of the population in national wealth was a mere 6%. Indians, meanwhile, are estimated to have fallen into extreme poverty in 2020, nearly half of the global new poor, according to the United Nations. The report says this surge comes at a time when India's unemployment rate was as high as 15% in urban areas, and the healthcare system was on the brink of collapse. <coughs> Sir, according to Oxfam India CEO, he said that, quote, stark reality of inequality contributing to the death of at least 21,000 people each day, or one person, one person every four seconds. Sir, this report also indicates that a particular company, which, which ranked 24th globally and second in India, witnessed its net worth multiply by eight times in a span of one year, from 8.9 billion US dollar in 2020 to 50.5 billion US dollar in 2021. And another company, another company, its worth doubled in 2021 to US dollar 85.5 billion from 36.8 billion US dollar in 2020. So this is the economic disparity that has occurred in the last financial year in India. Sir, the Oxfam report also points out to the increase in indirect taxes as a share of the union government revenue last four years, 
while the proportion of corporate tax in the same was declining. The additional tax imposed on fuel has risen 33% in the first six months of 2021 as compared to the last year, 79% more than pre-COVID levels. At the same time, the wealth tax for the super-rich was abolished in 2016. So lowering of corporate taxes from 30% to 22% to attract investment last year resulted in a loss of 1.5 lakh crore, which contributed to the increase in India's fiscal deficit, the report says. And there was no um, increase in private investment in spite of so much um, uh, avenues given to them by the government. Sir, the report further says that despite country's federal structure, the structure of revenue kept the reins of resources in the center's hands, and yet the management of the pandemic was left to the states who were not equipped to handle it with its meager financial or human resources. Sir, now, if you go through this, this is the real picture of equality, sir. This is how this economic disparity has affected the entire nation, not only during COVID, but even before and after that. Sir, the, this is the real picture of inequality among the richest, rich, middle class, marginalized, and the poorest of the poor of the country. What a splendid achievement of this NDA government for the past seven years. Sir, according to estimates by Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, two crore Indians they lost their jobs in April-May 2021. In October 2021, at least 5.46 million Indians lost jobs. And in November last year, six million salaried jobs were lost. There is no whisper in the President's address about this alarming joblessness in the country due to policy paralysis of the union government. And, sir, and the government, this government assured that there will be a creation of jobs for two crore unemployed youth every year. And this is the real picture that the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, they have assessed. Sir, let, me, let us see what the Honorable President has stated in paragraph 79 of his speech. Only one line I would like to quote with your permission. Quote, today, the country's achievements and success are as limitless as the country's potential and possibilities. Sir, <coughs> this... Uh, <coughs> Sorry, sir. In paragraph 79, I mentioned the President's address, but according to Oxfam report again, published in January 22, India falls in all international indices. For example, human development rank is 131 out of 189. In hunger index, India's rank is 94 out of 101 countries. Peace, 139 out of 163. Happiness, 144 out of 153. Healthcare, 145 out of 195. Gender gap, 140 out of 156. Environment, 168 out of 180. Internet quality, 79 out of 85. Water quality, 120 out of 120. Per capita GDP, 142 out of 189. Health expenditure as percentage of GDP, one of the lowest in the world. Expenditure on education is among the lowest in the world. National education policy of 1968 recommended for spending 6% of GDP for education. But so far, we have only invested, uh, three, allocated 3%. As is Safalata ke saath, desh aaj Amrit kaal mein pravesh kar raha hai. Amrit, 142 बिलियनियर पी रहे हैं और देश की आम जनता जो पी रहे हैं वो अमृत नहीं है हलाहल है हलाहल कैसे कि जैसे कि समुद्र मंथन की समय प्रभु महादेव 
हलाहल पी के नीलकंठ हो गए थे हमारे आम जनता का नसीब में आगे जो हलाहल काल आ रहे हैं न जाने क्या भयंकर स्थिति पैदा होगी ये सर, सरकार बोलते हैं बहुत ये सरकार बोलते हैं बहुत लेकिन इसकी असलियत क्या है मधुतिष्ठति जीव भाग्य हृदय तु हला हलम सर देर आर अदर अचीवमेंट्स टू ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल द सर्जिकल अटैक ऑन द फेडरलिज्म विच अदरवाइज इज ए बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एज रूल्ड बाई द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया द होम मिनिस्ट्री हैज रिसेंटली एक्सटेंड द जुडिस्टिक्शन ऑफ बॉर्डर सिक्योरिटी फोर्स फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन किलोमीटर टू फिफ्टी किलोमीटर इन द स्टेट्स बॉर्डरिंग विथ बांग्लादेश एंड पाकिस्तान विदाउट हैविंग एनी डिस्कशन विद द कॉन्सर्न स्टेट्स दिस यूनिलेटरल डिसीजन ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट is an attempt of coercion upon the elected state governments having international borders similarly the recent fatwa proposing amendment to is cadre rules is arbitrary and a veiled attempt to centralize executive powers of the states already nine chief ministers and 109 retired is ifs its officers have vehemently opposed this unilateral an arbitrary decision of the uni- union government sir constitutional heads in the opposition ruled states are behaving like political functionaries and interfering with the day to day administration of the states and challenging the policy decisions of the opposition ruled states of the governments and this and, and day in day out they are coming with coming out with press statements criticizing the state governments so this is unprecedented and this is a surgical attack on our federal structure sir assault on constitutional and because because this government because this government has forgotten the first article of the constitution of india the very first article article 1 of the constitution says and i quote india that is bharat shall be a union of states not a unitary state but these steps but these steps are actually supporting to form this um, this country stands from this country into a unitary state to to help strengthen the passage of totalitarianism sir assault on constitutional and statutory institutions like election commission of india cbc cneg cbi or oil loan they are also been exploited for political advantage of the ruling party and against the opposition parties sir most of these institutions have turned to be breeding grounds for selected group of retired government servants who are not only being appointed by the government to serve them beyond their service tenure but also getting extension after extension in their extended service career but the government is not too much satisfied with that only this is why on the national voters day the honorable law minister said and i quote in the name of independence of judiciary independence of election commission independence of legislature and executive if there is no coordination then how will we work how will one run the country unquote hence the government when the government wants to have a con- committed judiciary a conducive election commission and the agencies so and so forth in the name of so called coordination said the president speech has not addressed this growing problem of attack on time tested institution and authorities said in the name of economic reforms the government has emerged as a bikreta sarkar a sellers government in as much as it has decided to sell out almost all public properties these are psu banks insurance companies and even profit making public sector enterprises sir psu banks earned net profit of rupees 31820 crores in one year that is last fiscal 2020 2021 which is the highest in last 5 years sir yet government wants to sell psu banks to private sector for which banking nationalization amendment act is reportedly in the offing the government policy is to privatize profits of public sector on the one hand 
and to nationalize losses of private sector on the other. I am giving one example. Vodafone Idea, the private telecom company, owes the government rupees 170,000 crore, whereas rupees 16,000 crore shall be invested by government in their share capital. Is this not crony capitalism? On the one hand, bad loans written up by public sector banks from 2001 to 2021 amounts to rupees 9,88,160 crores. In 2021 alone, rupees 1,31,894 crores was written off. On the other hand, the public sector banks have reduced rate of interest on savings account from 6% to 2.9% 2 and in fixed deposits from around 12% to 5% in detriment to the interest of the common people. Mostly affected are senior citizens. Sir, this is something like rock Peter to pay Paul. Sir, in spite of such writing of bad loans, it has not come down. According to estimates, new bad loans during 2021 figured as rupees 2 lakh 2,879 crores. As on 31st March 2021, loan amount due to a very scintillate, very surprising, surprising figure, sir. As on 31st March 2021, loan amount due in top four NPA accounts of public sector banks stands at rupees 89,300 crores. Who are these big fishes? Who have eaten public deposit from public sector banks? Why has not government shown any courage to name them, not to speak of taking criminal action against them for open loot of public money? Sir, I am sorry to say the President's address does not reflect anything about the measures supposed to be taken by the government to arrest this unholy next SAS. Sir, such is the case of revelations made by International Consortium of investigating journalists through Panama Papers, Paradise Papers, and of late, the Pandora's Papers. More than 1,000 Indian Indians have stashed black money outside the country in the offshore tax haven. How many of them have been arrested? How much black money has been recovered? Publish a white paper. I urge upon the government to publish a white paper the way Pranam Mukherjee when he was the finance minister in 2012, he published a white paper on black money. If this government has the courage to inform the people about the action taken by this government to unearth black money, let the government publish a white paper on black money following the footsteps of Mr. Pradam Mukherjee, late Pradam Mukherjee. Sir, before I conclude, I would like to refer a portion of speech delivered by Honorable Justice D. V. Chandrachur, an eminent justice jurist of Supreme Court, published in the Indian Express on August 29, 2021, wherein the Honorable Justice said, I quote, this is in public domain because it was an online address, speaking truth to power is not only a right, but also the duty of every citizen, and the way to achieve this is by strengthening public institutions such as ensuring the freedom of the press and the integrity of election, acknowledging and celebrating the plurality of opinions, and by committing oneself to the search for truth as a key aspiration of society." Unquote. Since I believe, hence, if I believe in the freedom of press, I cannot characterize the media as supari media. And even if I have no faith in this government. I cannot term this government as supari government because that will be an irresponsible act on my part as parliamentarian. Justice Chandrasur also said, one line more, quote, one cannot only rely on the state to determine the truth as it may not always be free of falsehood, unquote. Said in this quest for truth, I am asking myself as to whether I should believe that New York Times is lying, Citizen Lab is lying, Amnesty Take is lying, French government is lying, German government is lying, US government is lying, 
Apple and WhatsApp who have sued NSO are lying. Only government of India stands in splendid isolation with the truth about Pegasus. This is my submission, sir. With these words, I conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you.